hello friends welcome to this next video on final difference method so in in this video we'll move ahead so let us see what we have done till now till now what are the steps for final difference method which we have studied in the last two videos the first step is that uh, you are given a pd this is the pd which which is given to you and you want to solve this pd using final difference method so the first step is you have to identify the domain of the pd you have to identify the domain okay domain means uh, the region where you have to solve your pd you have to find the solution of your pd on that uh, domain okay so suppose this is the domain of your pd then the next next step is that you have to cover your domain with a grid with a finite grid okay so it means that you have covered your domain like this okay. and then the final difference method will give you solution of the pd at these points okay and if you want to get more and more values then you have to make your grid refine more and more okay right so the next step was that what we have done we for simplicity we have considered that this domain is a square domain you can obviously uh, you can obviously like remove this assumption but for simplicity i am assuming this that domain is a square domain so we have something like this that we have this is 0 1 and then 0 1 and this is our domain and we have covered this domain with a finite grid like this it may not be zero it can be some x naught comma y naught this point origin it may not be origin then any point we have in this grid we have denoted as u i j where this is this stands for u i i is the index for x axis and j is the index for y axis we have already explained this in the second video so this u i j stands for u at the point x naught plus i del x comma y naught plus i del y so the second assumption which i am making is that these these are uniformly distributed points so like you have this this distance is same as this distance this distance and so on but you you can have non-uniform grids as well okay so but it is very easy to generalize what we are doing for this uniform grid okay so as as of now we will assume that our grid is uniform and we assume that the domain is square a rectangle basically okay so now let us move on to the next step so this is the situation you have something like this you, this is the situation you have like this is your domain and you have this grid okay, okay. so suppose this is my some point u i j and i have to solve a pd to get the solutions the value of the values of the solution at these points right and pd involves partial derivatives so the main task in finite difference method is that you have to convert your partial derivatives into something like which is algebraic okay so how do we do it so let us see what is the definition of derivative so suppose you are at this point i comma j so what is the de uh, definition of partial derivative of u with respect to x at the point i comma j it means that you have to move ahead at the point x you have this xi plus del x comma yj minus u xi comma yj divided by del x and you have to take limit del x goes to 0 this is the definition this is ui okay is that thing clear for, uh, to you that uh, definition of partial derivative at the point ij is limit of this thing right okay now what if i assume that this limit this particular limit is actually like we we don't use this thing okay and we assume that del x is very small if del x is small 
then I can approximately have this thing that curly u by curly x at the point i j is e approximately equal to u. This is uh, this thing is nothing but u that you have moved uh, i plus one in x direction and then j minus u i j divided by del x. Okay, so it means that we have an approximation of our differential. Uh, operator that we have an approximation of partial derivative with respect to x in terms of something which is algebraic and what are these these are the values at these grid points values of the solution at these grid points and we yet don't know these values but okay so th the main task of final difference method which is you have to convert the partial derivatives into algebraic forms so we get that uh, that flavor that how can we do it but we can obviously we we want to know that how this approximation how much uh, valid this approximation is okay what is the goodness of this approximation so let us uh, go into detail of these things so till now we have this thing that curly u by curly x at the point i j can be approximated as u i plus one comma j minus u i j upon del x okay right so and we want to know that how good this approximation is okay for that we have to look at uh, like uh, look at this equation from a different point of view so let us do that now i can use taylor's here you you all must be knowing about taylor's series right so if i start with this u i plus 1 comma j what is this this is nothing but u x not plus i plus 1 del x comma y not plus j del y okay so i can write this thing as u x not plus i del x plus del x comma y not plus j del y okay now what is this term this term is xi so this is u xi plus del x comma y i okay now i can apply taylor's here so this is u at xi comma y i plus del x times curly u by curly x at the point i j plus del x square upon 2 factorial times curly 2 u by curly x 2 at the point i j plus del x cube by 3 factorial curly cube u by curly x cube at the point i j and so on right okay now it means that you can this is what is this this is u i j now you can bring this on the an, another side so you have something like this so you have this from here you have u i plus 1 j minus u i j is equal to you have this del x you can divide with, with that del x so you have del x is equal to this is your curly u by curly x at the point i j plus here you have this del x square but you are dividing with del x so you will be left with del x here and you will be having del x square here and so on so all these further terms they have del x common right so i can take del x outside and then you have something i'll call that something k okay so from here you can see that you have this curly u by curly x at the point i j is equal to u i plus 1 j minus u i j upon del x minus this k into del x i can ag again call that minus k as k or you can call some other thing so this is some this is called something which is of order del x i'll explain what that means okay okay now look at this equation again here we were trying to approximate our derivative with this term okay this one this algebraic term and the same algebraic term is appearing here so it means that our derivative is exactly equal to the term which we are using to approximate it plus something which is of the order del x now let us understand what do we mean by saying that this this is our error term now this is our error term this much error we have introduced error term and this is called truncation error okay. 
so let us see what do we mean by saying that the error is of the order del x so suppose i am saying that error is of the order del x it means that if your del x is 10 to the power minus 1 then your error is also of the order 10 to the power minus 1 if your del x is of the order 10 to the power minus 2 then your error is also of the order 10 to the power minus 2 and so on okay and if you are saying that you have an error of the order del x square it means that when del x is of the order 10 to the power minus 1 then error is of the order 10 to the power minus 2 and when del x is of the order 10 to the power minus 2 error is of the order 10 to the power minus 4 and so on when the del x is of the order 10 to the power minus 10 you have error which is almost negligible 10 to the power minus 20 so you can see here that your error is decreasing faster as compared to here so if you have a, a scheme which is of the order del, uh, del, del, del x square that is better than the scheme which is of the order del x so this is the this is not the precise definition of order of del x for that we can go to number theory but this is how this order of del x works so if you have an error of the order del x it means that error is linearly dependent on del x okay and if you have a scheme of the order del x square then it means that error is quadratically depending on del x and so on okay so thank you in the next video we'll move ahead